with me is Stephen Tay from Vercel. Stephen? Hey, everyone. I'm Stephen. I'm a senior developer advocate here at Vercel. And we were just talking before we hit like go live on the fact that this is like my first live stream. Um, Stephen might no be way. a little bit. Yeah. Like <laughs> I've done this kind of thing like podcasts before, but um, in terms of putting my face out into the world on YouTube, this is the first time. So that's awesome. Bear with always, us. It's always uh, good to have a first. I, um, I, I'm, I, I, I was just telling James that by no means that I'm a pro. I've done, I've been doing this for about three to four times uh, with several of our partners like MongoDB uh, and a few others. And it's been a lot of fun because um, uh, not, not as, uh, on top of the fact that we get to chat uh, in a very conversational, casual manner, but also at the same time, these contents that we create, it's it's evergreen. So it gets to live on YouTube and it will bring us like, if you, in the future, people will discover the, the, the webinar and come check out our products. So it's great to do these. Absolutely. Um, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone in the payload community that I am a huge fan of just about everything Vercel does. Um, oh. That's good Rewinding to back to like 2017, I think that was the first year that I launched a Next.js project for a client. Nice. Like long ago. This was like before you even had dynamic um, route parameters for pages. Oh, like, wow. It was, it was in the early days. You're real OG here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, the funny thing, like the whole thing that sparked this live stream for me is that I have seen the headless CMS kind of rise to prominence and I saw like the proliferation of React and especially Next.js. Mm -hmm. um, I went next. I, I built one website on Gatsby and I was like, yeah, that's not really for me. And then I, I kept going with next and um, we would like pitch this to our clients at mm -hmm. the agency like setting. And it was always like, oh yeah, there's this new concept. It's a headless CMS. We're gonna build the front end with next. It's gonna be great. It's going to be way more like sustainable and manageable over time because we're going to build on a component basis and the separation of concerns between your CMS and like all this stuff. I would basically pitch the hell out of it to my clients. And they were like, yeah, that all goes over my head, but you probably know what you're doing. So just go for it. But like, as I pitched all of that in the back of my head, I knew that my dev team would have to set a lot more up from scratch to do a headless instance. Like if we're going to build a headless website, there are drawbacks, right? Yeah. Like there's more DevOps, there's more back and forth data connections. You got to handle redirects. You got to handle form submissions. Yeah. You got to share code. So like if you're building like the CMS and TypeScript and then you want to recycle those things on the front end and next, you got to copy and paste the types or have like a third, a third NPM package and share the code and like, we knew behind the scenes that like my pitch to the agents or to the clients was like, yeah, it's going to be better. But in reality, the reason we were going so hard on headless CMS was just because we wanted to use react and next on the front end. Right. Like 99% of people that use headless CMSs are using them to build a website. And it's kind of ironic. Like, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think there's definitely a, like as as we go from the monolith approach uh, starting back in the day, and then we started to decouple everything. Uh, we started to lose some sort of, I guess, um, uniform, whether it's from a design approach or an engineering approach between engineering teams and marketing teams. There's this disconnect that happens uh, when we go, you know, headless. But in this case, I think what you guys are solving, which I'm excited to discuss later, is, is going to bring basically bring everything, bring all the control back into the hands of the engineering team. And while at the same time maintaining flexibility um, and a good UX for the marketing team to be able to customize any of the content whenever they need without, the, without needing help from engineering teams. So I think um, what you guys are building at Headless is very special. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the funny thing, like I'm a firm believer in this. I think that if you give engineers the right tools, they're going to make the marketing people happy. Like it's not the other way around. Like if the marketing people get to make the decisions, they're going to give you these tools that are like maybe WYSIWYG editors that are like super powerful. But mm -hmm. should you as the engineer really give them controls to manage like color of type for the website? Like, no, you got to keep that like you got to keep that close to you. 
And yeah. if engineers have the tools that they need to successfully build solid products, then everyone will be happy. But it starts at the source and the engineers are the source. I'm a big believer in that. Definitely. Um, yeah. So, you know, like one thing specifically with me for headless is like, I used to say the word omni-channel content a lot. I used mm -hmm. to say like, yeah, headless CMS. If you ever want to have a native app in the future and you want to recycle your content, boom, your headless CMS can support content for your website and for your native app and for everything. And like, in, a, in principle, that's a cool idea. But in practice, like I've built maybe one project that recycled content from a headless CMS in more than one place besides a website. Like I built yeah. a lot of them just one time. Um, but you know, like nowadays I think it's implied that a CMS should be API based out of the mm -hmm. box. Like, I don't think anybody's really going to make a CMS again. That's like a monolithic CMS. It just doesn't make sense. Like what, if you don't have a rest API at the mm -hmm. very minimum, what good is the CMS in, a, in today's modern ecosystem? So even the word headless is almost like unnecessary now to me. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's that's I completely agree. There's there's definitely a shift towards the the old approach of everything everything in one monolith um, code base to a more flexible REST API approach. But also at the same time, I think the world is also moving towards edge uh, edge compatibility. I think that's something that we've discussed before. Uh, being able to do A/B tests or feature flagging, especially if you're running a marketing site, A/B testing is very important here. Uh, to be able to run that at a close proximity to the user without sacrificing, you know, layout shifts or any of the performance that the aesthetic side has, uh, it's going to be huge. And I think you guys are making way, uh, making strides towards that. And that's why I'm also very excited about, about Payload's future. Um, but yeah, I think I completely agree. I think having a REST API that's easily, you know, is well documented, easy, easy to use, uh, will definitely make the developers happy and in turn, the market is happy as well. Yeah, but on the edge topic, I want to revisit that in a minute because that's important to me. Like nice. when you get into certain sizes of um, websites and infrastructure needs, you do need to serve that content like at the edge, yeah, from the edge. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be dynamic in a lot of cases, especially if you're A-B testing. Like yep. you plug in some type of Google script to, to change text on your homepage, like, and it's on the client side, you're going to get penalized for that. Yep. From like a layout shift perspective or from like a largest contentful paint or first mm -hmm. contentful, something like that. Um, Very yeah. Large. <laughs> yep. yeah. So, Definitely. you know, I've been thinking a lot about like the future of headless and what it means and where payload needs to go to leverage all of the things that you and your team at Vercel are pushing forward, like edge functions mm -hmm. and, you know, right now serverless functions, but just being able to kind of like, remove this notion of like microservices hell where you have like, if you want to go build an enterprise CMS, you have to sign up for a form platform. You have to sign up for oh. an email platform. You have to sign up for a headless CMS. You have to put your front end oh, on your cell. And like at the yeah. end of the day, you're, you've got like 30 different services. And um, that like kind of makes me want to puke, especially <laughs> if it's just for a website. Like hundred yeah, percent. So like one it's, thing, it's, that we're, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because I, I literally put out a tweet thread the other day about how I built my personal blog using a, a, a lot of like different libraries, Next.js, content layer for, this, for the, um, the editing side of things, um, Resell, and I needed the form, so I used Tally forms, and people were like, it's just a blog. So, I, I mean, it's definitely important to have, um, you know, Resell for serving content, CDN, and, and Edge Network. Next year, as for the framework, but at the same time, a partner like Payload would be impactful because you can essentially build everything to one, one, one um, unifying layer, and yep. that will be that will basically save and, and it will make it, lives much easier for for developers, uh, especially when when you're building a marketing site instead of like an entire full fledged application here. Absolutely, and you know that's the thing about like one of the pillars of what I think is at the center of Vercel and especially Next.js and payload, something that we share in common is like simplicity is key in mm -hmm. a way. So like you don't have to learn too much about Next.js's specific paradigms to know how Next works. The yep. black magic is kept to a minimum. And I try to do that with payload as well, but like that's always been a tenant of what we're doing. And I think mm -hmm. like this, I have this theory on web development in general that like it just constantly swings back and forth between 
super complex new ideas and then they become simpler over time. And then that like, I think we're moving back towards the simplicity side right now. We're coming yes. out of the complexity, but now we know that you have to have some type of front end that has static capabilities and it has dynamic capabilities. Mm -hmm. It needs to be able to be deployed at the edge. And like that's complex stuff, but Next is making it simple. And yeah. I think one of my goals, what we've been concentrating on for the last couple of months at Payload is like, how can we do our part to take things back to simplicity? Mm -hmm. And we've actually spent like the last three months refactoring our code base, simplifying, um, abstracting it into being more modular mm -hmm. so that you can use payload in any stack and you don't have to manage different stacks for your CMS and for your front end. And nice. uh, today we're releasing a way to deploy payload serverless inside of an existing Next.js app nice. and you can deploy it on Vercel. Wow. And what that does, like it just simplifies everything so much it solves so many problems and so many heartaches from not only the engineering side of a headless CMS, mm -hmm. but also like the marketing experience of actually using the CMS itself because nice. they're connected. You can click on the preview button and you can go to the front end in the Next.js website and have like a banner at the top that shows, okay, I'm logged in. Here's an edit button for this page. I can easily create a new page for this. Here's how I edit this content and just mm. adding more of that simplicity back for not only the marketers, but also for the engineers themselves. That's um, incredible. Yeah, I think I think the your your this launch is is perfect timing because um, we are so we launched Next.js 13 app router back in the I, I believe it was the previous Next.js conference that we did, and um, and we've been putting a lot of work in to get that to sit stability. Basically, right now it's still in beta but we're getting very close to be able to launch it to GA and have everyone use it in production. Oh, yeah. uh, but right now there are already people using it in production and it's performing really well. But why I'm bringing that up is because um, server components is going to be a game changer, especially when it comes to uh, folks like Payload, like yourself, because you'll be able to essentially call await, uh, I don't know, pay, I, I don't know exactly yep. the syntax, but it's like await payload.db, uh, uh, collections, whatever, directly inside your React component on the, it's a server component, but you're writing that code directly inside that direct component. And that, and that function call is basically cached. You can basically specify whatever duration you want it to be cached for. And that cache is, is reused across multiple functions. If you have the same exact, um, function call. So it's, it's, a it's a new paradigm of, of programming here that's that's really, really flexible and allows developers to do uh, things like A-B testing directly in a, in a single component or setting different cache intervals for different components on a, on a single page. Like your, your header is cached for a much longer time, your hero is cached for a shorter time, and then your dynamic components are not cached at all. So it's like, it's a very flexible approach and component based. And I think uh, payload will really thrive in this, this environment. Well, I want to pull up some code examples of that in a Let's second. Do it. Um, I just want to comment like on the app folder itself, like mm -hmm. payload actually built our entire site on the app folder the same week. I heard. Oh, like it, we were early adopters, but it's still live. Like our site right now is on the app folder nice. and um, it is, you know, not yet generally available, but I am a big believer that that is the future, especially server components. Mm -hmm. And so like, I do want to show, I have an example pulled up of like how to use the payload API inside of a server component. And it's pretty awesome. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do this right, but mm -hmm. tell me if you can see my screen right now. Yeah. Not yet. Sean, can you do the screen? Sean, um, our, <laughs> Operations manager is sitting about three feet to my side over here. Okay, how do we how do we feel? We got it. Yep. All right. So this is a Next.js app, and it is running the newest version of Next. And this is a server component right here. Mm -hmm. This is a page server component. And with this new integration between Next and Payload, mm -hmm. you can literally use Payload's local API directly inside of your server component to fetch data. And it's all perfectly typed. 
Just like wow. you, for those of you that know about the CMS side of payload, like, you know, that we generate types for you and it's super types type safe and everything is reusable, but like all of that type safety can be applied directly to your next JS app seamlessly now. And it all runs in the same repo. So like Damn. I'm just fetching pages by the slug and then I just return that page into my JSX down here. But I can say like, if I wanted to, I could say console log page dot bam. All these types wow. are just right here. And so all of our components on the front end are leveraging those types. And it's just like a bulletproof way to build things that you can trust. That's just, just like amazing. And the, the optimizations that the server components provide for will make this not only dynamic, but also just fast, always. It's going to be beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and the fact that um, each of these server components actually allow you to, you can basically create um, a loading.js or TSX file. And that basically allows you to do loading. loading um, if, if, for example, you, uh, a, a good way to put this is that with the loading spinners or, or, or divs, you're not as slow as your slowest backend. So yep. payloads does not give you a backend, right? It, it basically is the CMS or, or the, um, what's the word for it? ORM essentially for yep. you to call your backend. So what if maybe your, your database is, has, has an outage or it's slow, these loading spinners will basically allow you to still use server components and payload inside the server component but at the same time, the users will get an immediate effect when they click on a button or open a dial or stuff like that. So absolutely, it's, yeah, very flexible. Absolutely. It's just the beginning. Um, edge functions are next up for us. This is all serverless. And we do give you the endpoints inside of your next app as well. So like you can see this is like my structure of the app right here. But um, we have a demo that great. shows how all of this works. But then yeah. we also have handlers for every one of the endpoints. But this right here is pretty cool. Like this is a payload package that outputs an admin bar for your um, integration. And if I show you what oh, wow. that looks like in the browser real quick, like here's payload running the home page for our demo. Mm -hmm. And then I can pop over to the front end and you can see that we're, we've got this logged in bar that appears. And if you're logged into payload and you're browsing the front end of your website, you automatically get this bar that pops up that you can seamlessly link to back and forth from oh, the wow. CMS to whatever page you're viewing. Um, and this is what I'm talking about, about like simplifying and like, hey, if you're building a website, avoid the microservices hell. Like mm -hmm. make it easier for you so that you can build a better product for your users. And with this type of thing, I mean, we had this with WordPress back in 2003, but like it's time we kind of bring that stuff back. And connect the dots a bit more seamlessly. That's amazing. Um, yeah, this is all running right on Vercel right now. Totally serverless. Oh, beautiful. That's yeah. that's awesome. And I think in this case, like whenever you click, click edit page and you make some changes inside your payload, um, which runs in the same, like literally in the same project, right? As your, yeah. as your marketing site. And whenever you hit save, that could potentially trigger um, a rest.revalidate function. It's essentially a mm -hmm. way for us to invalidate the cache for a single page um, instead of you having to redeploy your entire application, waste, I don't know, three, four minutes in build time. And, but with this, it basically saves and updates instantly within less than uh, once that one second or, or a couple of a couple hundred milliseconds. So yes. that's the, yeah, that's the beauty here. That's also already built into this demo. The revalidate, awesome. um, the on-demand revalidation is huge. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that I would love to see from Next in the future is a way to revalidate redirects. Components? No, 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 redirects. redirects. Like, I know this is specific, um, oh. but like, so say, you, like, because some people will manage redirects in a CMS, like for the mm -hmm. marketing team, for example. Right. And right now we have payload managing redirects, but you have to export them in your Next config. And that is mm -hmm. done at build time. But right. If we could do that re on demand revalidation with redirects as well, mm -hmm. um, the marketing team will get happy. I think I think that's when that's where middleware shines. So with edge middleware, you essentially uh, basically define the matcher function to match all routes, and then whenever there's a change in the redirects, 
you can change that um, on demand. You don't have to do a new build. Beautiful. Essentially, yeah. Essentially, it all happens uh, at the edge directly before re at request time before the content is served to the user. So okay. there's no layout shifts. There's no flash of a previous page. It instantaneously just shifts over. And that's actually what I'm using for one of my side projects called Dub. It's like an open source bit.ly alternative. And I'm using Edge middleware to handle all the redirects that people are doing from their short links to their destination URLs. Hmm. So it all happens within less than, uh, I don't know, 50 milliseconds or even, even faster. So it's a very efficient way for you to maintain the flexibility of being able to edit redirects on the fly. I got to check that out. I, okay. When you say it, it makes sense. I just don't know how I never thought of that before. I stalk the Vercel stuff regularly. <laughs> so <laughs> it's awesome. Kind of another, I, haven't seen I also wanted to bring up another thing about uh, uh, on the on the topic of on demand revalidation. I think currently uh, we can only on demand uh, revalidate pages on demand, like an entire page. But in the future, like this is what we're it's on the roadmap of the app directory is to be able to revalidate a single component. Yep. And the 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 value in that, if you think about it, it's if you have I think about it, if you have a layout component or like a header bar that spans across all the pages of your site, instead of having to revalidate all those pages just because you changed your logo or your name or one of your drop down menus. You just need to revalidate the component and bam, like with that, it's it's a single revalidate call. You invalidate a cache key and from that, the entire website is already up to date. You don't need to, you know, make multi multiple revalidate calls using like an, a promise all and risk running into, you know, risk DDoSing yourself because you're revalidating so many pages. Right. So that's something that is, is I'm very excited for. Uh, especially for larger marketing pages. Yeah, you know, that's actually funny because that's one of the things that I've always wondered how the future will solve. Like this is the exact pattern that you just mentioned. Like we oh, have find yes. global, you find the main Perfect menu, example. but where do you need to bust that cache for like, because is it all of the pages? Are you going to DDoS yourself? Like, what <laughs> if, like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's pretty cool. Exactly. Exactly. That's a perfect example right there. This is a layout component. You're doing a payload um, call directly inside a server component. And if you want to change something right now, you have to like batch your calls or might as well just push a new build because it's a, the entire app is being uh, revalidated anyway. So with, with that in the future, it will be very much more efficient. Absolutely. Hey, I see some good questions in the chat. Maybe we should address a couple of these. Um, Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first one that I'm seeing is Sean asking if we're using a mono repo. Um, that is a good question. Mono repos are supported, but with this um, new package, you don't even need to have a mono repo. You can just do it in a normal GitHub repo. And I'll show you what this looks like because we have a we have a demo package that's already built. And this is it. It's on GitHub. It's all open source, but it all is just one repo. Like, oh, wow. it's not, you don't have to run two separate, like, like folders for different applications anymore. You deploy payload into your next app. So like the admin UI for payload, what I was showing here, that is literally just a route or that's a page inside of your app folder in Next.js. Mm. Like if I show you this, uh, let's go to this file actually. This is how you render the payload admin UI. You just wow. import it and you render it like that. You import it from payload and you render it. So th this is just one repo. It, so in essence, it is a mono repo, but it's not a, like in the way that I think you were asking. I love that. I love this this uh, mono repo quote unquote approach because it's it's similar to this project that I. Uh, it's a starter kit that I launched at Vercel. It's called the Platform Starter Kit. And that starter key basically allows you to serve thousands of custom domains and, and even subdomains on uh, within a single Next.js application. It's not a mono repo. It just uses different directories to differentiate between your incoming host name. Like if it's a, I don't know, steventay.com or jamesmerker.com, like all these different host names will be intercepted by the middleware. Hmm. Going back to H middleware here. 
And then it basically just does a rewrite. Uh, in your case, uh, in payload's case, I think it's just a, a simple like route. But like with with um, different custom domains or subdomains, like so with that, the reason I brought that up is because in this case, in in the case that the user wants to do admin dot domain dot com instead of domain dot com slash admin, they can do that with Edge Middleware and the router. So yeah, that's. Um, it's very, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very flexible approach here. I love it. I love it. Yep. I mean, we're going to go all in on edge functions next. That's our, that's our next um, task ahead. And I think it's a good time to kind of segue into like, what's on the radar? What are we going to do next? Um, what does this mean for you as an engineer? I want to do a little recap and then I want to just open it up for any more questions. If anybody else wants to shout something out. Um, ooh, you know what? I think I just got one that I want to reference Douglas. <laughs> that is a good question. Um, if this is a pain point on the market, like we're solving things by simplifying, allowing you to connect payload and next into single repos. And let me comment on like the pain point in the market. Like from me, I've been um, running an agency for the last almost eight years. And I'd say a good 95% of our projects were just websites. But like having to deploy the CMS, having to make changes to the CMS, having to then turn around and make changes to the front end, deploy them in tandem with each other so that nothing breaks or nothing goes down. Um, also, just having the DevOps and like the, the team to be able to support that type of complexity, like those types of things make it so that you're slower as a team. Like this is about optimizing your workflow. This is about making you more productive. And even if people don't know it, like maybe it's not a known pain point because people have been dealing with it. I think that once you are able to simplify and once you see that your throughput will increase by simplifying your stack, there will be no turning back. Like no more combi combinations of microservice hell from 13 different vendors. Just do it in once, one place, deploy it, get your preview branches on next uh, on Vercel and everything and just simplify the work involved. Um, I think it's going to be huge. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this future because we are. I don't think I can share too much about it right now, but at Vercel, we are making a lot of strides towards bridging the gap between your headless CMS, headless CMS uh, with your front end. So uh, we're launching a very exciting feature in the near future <laughs> that basically allows you to um, very easily edit your content. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I don't spoil it. But yeah, it's it's going to be huge. And I think uh, what you guys are doing is going to be a good um, sort of a good platform or launch pad for people to try this feature out. Uh, and yeah, I, I completely agree that there has to be a way to bridge this gap. And you guys are already doing it. So kudos to you guys. I don't think you spoiled it, but I think I can read between the lines enough. And nice. yes, we will be one of the first to implement that, whatever it is. That's amazing. And I've seen, I've, there's a there's a um, teaser video on your Twitter recently that like, <laughs> I don't know who's doing your animation and your branding stuff, but I think the universe lit on fire when that went out and people yeah. need to know what's going on. I love it. Um, I know there are so many guesses that, um, the, the funniest one that we saw that it was like, Versailles launching a perfume brand <laughs> because of all the, I saw the crazy. That. 3D stuff that we, we had in that animation. But yeah, I, I, we're very excited to see that people are also excited for this. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of cool, cool things coming out. I, I can believe it. <laughs> if you guys keep up what you have been doing over the last couple of years. Okay, more questions. Um, will this work for any serverless deploy? Yes, it will just be, it, I mean, basically it just outputs route handlers. That's it. Nice. Or like API handlers. And so it's pretty seamless. Like our goal with payload like I talked a lot about Next today and putting it inside of a Next repo, but ideally payload is composable in a way that you can plug it into any app wherever you're running. Um, and that could be a SvelteKit app or whatever you're doing or Vue.js, like whatever you want. It doesn't, all payload is at this point is it's a bunch of Lego blocks that you can compose into your own stack. And that's why like, that's our focus. We want to make it more simple and portable and like pluggable. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to add on to that real quick because I, I really love how low level payload gets. And that's that's like the key to unlocking 
um, enterprise contracts. And I believe you guys already have a few. Uh, and that's because like, if you're something like Webflow, for example, or like something like, even something like Vercel might be hard to like crack into these enterprise uh companies like microsoft google because they have like their own like oh they need to use azure they need to use i don't know google cloud gcp or something and but in your case payload has a unique advantage here because you guys are so composable and flexible to integrate into existing code bases and it's 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 open source first of all it's also very transparent there and people can easily plug and play into their existing systems and essentially, it's like TypeScript for CMSs. Now that I think about it, it's like very uh, modular. Uh, exactly. And, and that's why you're, you guys are getting so many amazing logos and, and large companies using Payload already. So Yeah. Well, we're just starting. Um, the future's bright. I, I'm nice. going to poach a couple more questions here. Um, supporting other storage than S3. Yes, we support any file storage that you need. Um, we have one plugin, it's called Cloud Storage, and we have adapters for Azure, GCP, S3, and a couple other ones. I think, uh, shout out to Alessio, I think he built one from our community for, I can't remember what. I think we even support Supabase storage right now. Um, but yeah, you can ship your files off wherever you want. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Um, scaling for agencies. That is also a very good question. And I'm going to do a whole video series on that because I feel very passionately about the struggles that agencies face. Like you guys need to smash out website after website and your engineering team needs to be productive and you need to have a stack that you can train your engineers on that every one of your engineers can get up to speed with. And uh, payload is going to be the best option for that. YouTube videos are coming out shortly and they're going to have some stupid name like 10x your agency with payload or something. Pretty stupid. I know that, but deal with it. Um, there will be more coming. Let's see. What else do we have? Um, cold starts. Serverless cold starts. That's a good question, Andreas. Um, right now, you will have cold starts. But when we support edge functions, that's going to be solved completely. And payload is like 99% of the way from to supporting edge functions. Like, Already, I think if you use something like Prisma or other packages, those packages are way too big to fit into an edge function. Like edge functions have file size limitations and all of the stuff that those packages have to support needs to be jammed into every function. But with payload, we are very small overhead. Right now we're about two megabytes and uh, we can get it smaller than that. And edge functions are coming soon and that will alleviate cold starts entirely. Nice. And in the meantime, though, you could also use um, in, in, in the Next.js 12 terms, it's get static props and ISR, uh, incremental static regeneration, basically to cache your, because you're a marketing site, you don't really need real time or even if you have real time, you could make it, you scope that into a component. So essentially the code starts are pretty much invisible in this case, because you're turning all the dynamic stuff into static. But at the same time, re reserving the uh, ability to revalidate anytime you need. So, yes. Yeah. Even though payloads APIs are like blazingly fast, anyways, um, we did a performance benchmark. I'm not going to call out any names, but you can go <laughs> look it up if you want. Nice. Um, but every single website that we ever build with payload is statically rendered for the marketing side. Like that's the way to do it. Revalidation okay. and preview environments for editors render it static. That's the move. 100%. Peach. Yes. I'll literally never look back from that. But like we talked a lot about the dynamic aspect, like redirects and middleware and things like that. These things can be combined and composed so that your marketing site will literally be blazingly fast. And you don't have to worry about cold starts for that. Like you just get to sidestep the whole conversation. Um, yep. Yeah, I feel pretty strongly about that. I never looked back. Uh, <laughs> all right. What do we got? I'm getting mocked for my vocabulary, like usual. Discord loves to do that. Um, I... I I never noticed it until people started calling me out on it. Uh, I think the questions are pretty much wrapped up. Um, yeah, let's just recap and then close it up. I think, uh, Stephen, it's been a great time having you here, and I really appreciate you coming on this with us. Um, I'm really looking forward to that, that idea that you teased. Yep. And, I mean, we wanted to build it. We wanted to build something like that. But if you're building it, we will go all in with that. That's amazing. Um, yeah. yeah.
it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much again for, for having me. I think I personally have a lot of uh, thoughts and opinions on, on CMSs because I we work with a lot of, uh, we currently use content for a result, but we're always considering different, newer, better uh, CMSs and partnering with, with you guys is, is one of the, the approaches that we're taking here. But at the same time, personally, I also use, um, have tried out a lot of different CMSs for my side projects uh, and the, the marketing sites that I need. And it's, it's hard, like a lot of these CMSs out there is just, it's very hard to seamlessly integrate with your existing designs and stack, even if they're hitless, you know? Um, and that's why I think payload has a, a very unique advantage here. Uh, and you guys should be proud of all the work that you've done, especially with, with the enterprise contracts that you have and all the existing like community contributions and, and the fact that your community is so passionate and showing up for today's stream. That's also a huge sign. So yeah, kudos to you guys. I'm very excited for, for the future for both payload and Rissell and, and, and like looking forward to collaborate more. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Do Thanks, you guys want to say hi. Oh, yeah. Hi, my cat. Before we leave, <laughs> well, I gotta bring my dog in. What's your cat's name again? I forgot. His name's Lucky. We got him very Lucky. recently. All right. Well, I'm bringing He's, my dog. Uh, Hold on. Let's do it. <laughs> you guys can make fans. Say hi. This is Blaster. <laughs> oh my god. He's huge. Say hi. Hi, love. Hey, nice bro. <laughs> All right. We're gonna wrap He's it up. Good. Thanks for yeah. everybody. Thank you, everyone. See you guys.